I was doing all this detail work and it just got me really tight. And so I just, today I really am feeling like I, I wanna move a little bit more and I wanna get more experimental. So just the first few, let's just do some very quick warm ups to see what's going on here. And I really wanna play you guys. I don't know if I will stick to that, but that is absolutely my goal. I want to just mess around because everything's just been too nice lately with my drawings. And I want to be, I suppose, a little bit more ferocious. So let's see if I can do it. I, I, I sometimes have these big plans and they don't work out, but let's see what happens. So I'm going to really dig in and see what I can do. So let me just do a little bit of work with the white up here. This is the Karen Dash brand that I'm doing. And I'm gonna see what the Sennelier feels like because I suspect that they're not the same. And people are just always asking me questions about the different brands. And honestly, I have not worked with oil pastel that much. It, it's not a material that I really feel I understand the nuances of, but but that's why these drawing lungs are so fun because I really do have the opportunity to play with materials I wouldn't ordinarily take the time to really understand. Okay, let's see what the Sennelier white feels like. I'll just block in, actually, I should break it. This is what I do with all of my Ola pastels. I pretty much never draw with them with the paper because the paper, limits you, it makes it so you only draw with the tip. And if you guys can draw with the side of the oil pastel, it's a huge difference, okay? All right, let's, whoa, these are so soft. Oh my God, these are so, so what the heck? They're like practically melting in my hands, sheesh. Wow, that's a really big, oh my God, these are really smeary, sheesh. So I could see this could be helpful probably later in the process, but this really, I think, I think I would have to totally change my drawing process to draw with these Sennelier's. Right now I'm more used to the Karen Dash, so I'm just gonna stick with those for the stream, but I'd be interested to get a set of those and, and see because they're so creamy. Oh my God, I was not expecting that to be the case. Again, really gonna try, oh, you guys, you know when you know you're just drawing so tightly and it, it just makes me feel crappy about my technique. So I'm really gonna try today. Now see here, I tried to put the white over the red, but you can see it just got smeary. I couldn't get that harsh graphic mark of the beak. So what I'm gonna do here with this tool is I'm just gonna go in, I'm gonna scrape away the pastel that's in that section. And now check this out. Now you can go in and draw a beak that's way too wide. <laughs> but see that that's the type of thing that the pastels do really well with these tools. Because if I didn't do that, I wouldn't be able to get in this nice, like crisp mark that I have going on right now. All right, I'm slowing down guys, this is not good, sheesh. You know what it is with oil pastels? It's just so many pieces and parts. And by the way, I will absolutely be looking at the chat. It's just, I can't do both at the same time. So I'll take breaks every now and then and I'll look at the chat and see what you guys are doing. So if you have questions, just ask me in the chat and I'll scroll back up during the breaks to see what you guys are doing. So if I don't reply to your question, it's not because I'm not gonna reply, it's just because I cannot draw and answer questions at the same time. That's just, see, I can draw and talk, but I can't draw and talk and answer questions. That, that's not, that's not my jam. <laughs> now this yellow, oh no, that's not yellow ochre, ew. I'm getting to that point where just, you know, all your oil pastels, they just look the same because <laughs> they're all gooked up and gross. That, that's sort of the point that I'm at right now with my pastels. And I really, I wanna get like the body of these chickens. By the way, you guys know how I found these chickens. This is awesome. 
So yeah, I could have gone to a farm or something like that, but my family member was house sitting for these people. And so we went to visit them and I didn't know they had chickens. We just went over to see them and there's this huge chicken. I was like, oh my God, <laughs> this is like gold mine of reference photos. I was like so excited. I spent like, I totally ignored everybody. I just spent the whole time taking photos of the chickens. And it was awesome because it was a friend's house. Well, a friend of a friend. I didn't have to worry about getting too close to them because I, I asked the person that was house sitting, I was like, hey, is it okay if I actually go into the coop? And they're like, yeah, they don't care. And so I was like in the coop <laughs> with the chickens. I was so close to them. It was awesome. Oh my God, it's so much fun taking pictures of them. And there were a few that were a little bit of a pain. I had a bunch that kept hanging out underneath the trees. And that was kind of a pain in the butt because I couldn't take a picture because there are all these branches in the way. But, oh my God, I had so much fun. Like I had no idea chickens could be this fun, you guys. What I am noticing about the Sennelliers, the white is much more powerful. So when I put in that white, it was able to go right on top really quickly. And that was kind of nice. So I can definitely see advantages in that area. Oh God, that beak is so off. Maybe I should move the eyes over to the side. Okay, I'm gonna scroll up and see what you guys are saying in the chat. Adrian says, what paper do you recommend for using oil pastels? Actually, Adrian, my favorite surface for oil pastels is canvas gessoed canvas because I really enjoy the texture. And also if it's gessoed, the oil pastel really glides across the surface. Like this, honestly, this is like boring old construction paper that you would buy for an elementary school class. So this paper I'm using is not nice. It's just <laughs> happens to be here and I was too busy to go to the art store. But it also depends on, do you want texture? Like for example, this paper I have here there's no texture, it's just totally smooth. But I do really love charcoal paper because charcoal paper and pastel paper have a beautiful texture. So if you wanna highlight that, you can have a lot of fun with that. Honestly, it really does not matter. I think that oil pastel is such a versatile medium that you really can just do whatever you want with them. It's really nice. Tom G says, I've heard that Sennelier are like lipstick. Oh my God, that's so accurate. <laughs> that's exactly, it's sort of like messy lipstick. Like it would not go on thin. It would go on really thick and get very goopy. It's sort of like lipstick that somebody melted. That, that's how I would describe that material. <laughs> hmm. I want to say thank you so much for Nikolai for the super chat who says tip for the chicken. Cool. Thank you so much for supporting us. As you guys know, our content is 100% free and we rely entirely on donations. So any amount you guys can contribute to that is so incredibly helpful. Let's see. Sonnet says, I have so much trouble drawing tightly that's why my professor would always tell me to add on to canvas, et cetera, and go bigger. Yeah, when you draw bigger, it's a totally different ball game because you can't tighten up. If you do, you'll never finish the piece because you're not able to cover the acreage that you need to cover when you work big. And so that's a great suggestion. Any of you guys here who are feeling like you're drawing too tightly, just drawing bigger can really get you to do that. And then what I was saying earlier, about peeling the paper off and really drawing with the side is so, so helpful, you guys, because so much of the time people just draw with the tip and the tip is just very limited and it makes it hard to get that broad range of marks. Karen says, I really don't get why in art circles it's frowned upon to draw 
and paint tightly exactly instead of loosely and abstractly? Why does everyone have to pretend to be someone who they're not? Well, here's my feeling, Karen. Whether you draw smoothly or tightly or gesturally, it's a matter of taste, okay? One is not better than another. I'm somebody who's really into gesture and mark making. And so for me, that is a priority to loosen up. Other people are different. Other people feel that they want to have that tightness. And some people are really freaking good at it. I, I can do it, but I get a little bit bored in the process. Like it isn't feels exhilarating to me. That's a personal choice. So I would just say, you guys, just try everything. If you've never drawn loosely before, try it. If you've never drawn tightly before, try it. And then you can step back and decide, oh yes, okay, that technique works much better for me. Thank you so much, Karen, for the super chat who says, just so on canvas for oil pastels, thanks for the tip. And thank you so much, Sonnet, for the super sticker. Really appreciate this, you guys, because our budget has gotten a lot bigger. Like I was looking at our numbers. Our budget in the past year was three times what it was the year before. And honestly, it's really because people are now really participating. So we had to like just triple our workload, which is great. I mean, I'm so excited to do that, but there is the financial reality of that is it, it takes more to actually run the platform. Whitney is saying, how do you use the gummy eraser? Okay, well, let's do that on this one because I didn't really do very much to this piece. So let's just play around. Really what it is, is taking the oil pastel, this, oh, this eraser is a little bit too smushy. I don't like this eraser very much. But like if I wanted to smooth out some of the surface here, like if I didn't want it to be quite so coarse looking. I mean, the whole thing about the gum eraser though is it does take away the oil pastel. So depending on the results you want, this may not be what you're looking for, but could also be really fun because now that I've taken away the oil pastels, I can really go back and push together some fresh whites. And so that, that is one of the advantages. So I would just say, you guys don't think about oil pastel as a purely additive media because it is not. You can definitely add, you can definitely take away it really is a more sculptural process than that. So don't think about it as a one-way street. It's not, there's just so many things that you guys can do. I mean, you can use your fingers and I do think ultimately your fingers are easier to control. Although sometimes I like using the shop towel because this is a little bit easier. This, this particular gum eraser I'm using is too mushy. I don't like it. I really need to get a different brand. I feel like that one is not so great, but let's just play with this and see what we can do. And like this tool, if you guys look at some of this in here, what you can do is build up the oil pastel. So there's actually too much more than what you want like that. And then this is really fun because you can go in and just like scrape away like this. I'm using the wide side, but if you wanted to, you could absolutely go in with the tip. And this is really fun because you, you can just go in and scrape away some of those features. I, this is my test drawing. Like I'm not trying to really do a good job with this drawing. I'm just trying to show off some of the materials. Although sometimes you want something a little bit sharper, like, oh, this one's better, okay. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Because if you look at the chicken, it does have a couple marks in there that are really fun. I mean, one of the reasons I chose chickens for today, I, first of all, I was just so psyched. <laughs> I was like so proud of my chicken pictures. But also I really wanted to do one that had very visible texture because the last oil pastel stream we did did not really address that. And I wanted to have a subject that would get me to do a different type of mark and a different type of surface than what I have going on in here. I am gonna beef up some of my darks 
with some purple. I think I'm, what happened? I think I ate up. Oh, here it is. Okay. Because purple is a great substitute for black. And it oftentimes, it really does look black sometimes. I mean, like this up here, I know the color's not great on the webcam, but it's so close to black. And honestly, it's sort of accomplishing the same thing that the black would be doing. So I don't mind that. But I do want to use the black to put in these weird little dots. Guys, chickens are so weird looking. They're so dopey. I don't know. They're just like really silly <laughs> creatures. Like I just I'm having so much fun with them. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes they're more fun than the adults. <laughs> Plus chickens never ask me to pour them a glass of milk. <laughs> so I don't have to worry about that. <laughs> I think the lesson here is that chickens are better than people. I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Oh, sorry. I forgot to take that comment away. There we go. Thank you for letting me know, Eva. Okay. Let's do another reference because I feel like I overworked that. Um, let's see. This one is white. So give me one second and I'm going to change this to the next chick which is this white one. And let's go back and maximize. Okay. Karen is asking, please say which bird reference number is next. You know what? I actually can't remember what the numbers are. So what I would recommend is just download all of the photos and then you can go through and find them that way. <laughs> Jane Gray says chickens have the intelligence of a four-year-old. I don't know. Four-year-olds can be really smart, you guys. <laughs> and Jose says, what do I do when I don't find myself enjoying art anymore? Take a break. Walk away for a little while. And it's okay if you walk away for a while. I mean, I don't really recommend this, but I took two years off my studio practice because I did these solo shows that really burned me out. And I was so stressed out from that situation and so frustrated that I said to myself, you know what, I don't wanna do this until it's fun again. And it, it really literally took two two years for me to get to that point where I like wanted to work. And it's, it's unpleasant for that to happen. But another thing you can do, if you don't want to take two years off, which I don't recommend actually, just draw what you want to draw. Draw what's fun. Even if you're like, oh, I know this is quote bad for me. It's sort of like letting yourself eat chocolate cake. You're like, oh yeah, this is too many calories, but just have it. I had a student a couple of weeks ago say to me, oh, I'm having a really hard time with my studio practice and I feel so guilty because I'm just drawing anime fan art, but it's so much fun. And I said to them, just do it, it's fine. I mean, it's okay to make work it's just for your personal enjoyment. Not everything you do as an artist has to be enriching or be a learning process. Sometimes you just want to sit there and just render something just because it like feels good. So I would not be concerned about always making every single experience really fruitful. Sometimes it's just really, really shallow. Like Neil is saying here, I took a break during Christmas from working on my college app portfolio. Still drives me crazy up to this day. I still feel mushy. I'm currently stuck to try chickens. I'm sorry, Neil. I know this is not very deep as a subject, but it's also nice. Like Sybil has a great suggestion. Switch art materials you're used to. You explore more. That's what I do when I'm fed up with art. Yeah. What I do sometimes when drawing is making me crazy, I'll get out some clay and I'll just start sculpting. And that can be a really fun thing to do. Okay, let's move on to this white chicken. So let, let's start with the Sennelier white. 
because, oh, well, it's probably not good for sketching. So let's do this. I will sketch with the Karen dash and then I'll put the Sennelier on top because I don't like my initial layer to be that dark and pronounced. Oh God, this chicken is so weird. Like they've got such weird proportions, you know? Oh wait, is this the wrong color? No, I think that is white. Okay, like a huge wing up here. I mean, they're so silly. <laughs> I don't know, some of them are really lopsided, like the way that they waddle around, I think is just hilarious. And I'm gonna try this time to keep my drawing more simple. I think in the last one, it sort of fell apart, but I'm not trying to judge myself right now because just warm up. Everybody see the beak? So the beak is this yellow color, but the thing is the yellow oil pastel, I'll just draw a little bit here. It's very transparent. So you can see when I put the yellow over the black paper, it almost looks green. So if you really want like a yellow color, like a nice buttery Naples yellow, put white down first and then put the yellow over it. And now you can see it's like a nice, actually substantial yellow. So that's a good trick for you guys to think about. Let's get in some yellow ochre, which I guess Jordan and I <laughs> decided at the stream yesterday is baby poop before <laughs> they start eating solid food. <laughs> Parents, you, you guys, you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Because when you have a baby, your life is all about poop. Poop determines how your day goes when you're a parent. I, I will spare you guys some of my best poop stories, but uh, let's just say there's a bunch. <laughs> okay. Now for the white, I think... I'm just gonna block in, like there's this pronounced shape, which I suppose is this wing. And I'm gonna really beef up the density here because one thing that I think is fun about oil pastels is you can play with density. So as everybody see, I'm making the neck really dense and full, but I think down here, I'm going to leave it so that it's not so dense. That is super fun. You don't have to color it all the way in. I mean, you can, but I think it's not as interesting in terms of the marks. So yeah, this wing is gonna really come together like that. And then I'll keep the density like this, but then as we get off here, I'm gonna let it trail off a little bit more. And some of these feathers are a little bit of a mess. I feel like this, chicken did not comb its feathers or something. I'm sure they don't. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't know what it is, day in the life of a chicken, what they do all day. Okay, now I'm gonna go in with the Sennelier and I'm gonna just, oh my God, it's so, this is like so melty, jeez. You, you know what I would say? I'd have to do it more but based on what I'm seeing right now with the Sennelier, I think I would do what I'm doing, which is to do the structural first layer and then go in with, oh my God, see, it's like smushing. Then do the Sennelier over it because this, honestly, this would be really bad for sketching. It's, it's too wet, it's too mushy. And I think it seems like it's working really well for this top layer. I mean, I feel like I could just, let's just try it. I could like press it in with my thumb like that. Oh my God, it is so mushy, you guys. Blech. It's like all over my fingers, yuck. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna zoom in. So maybe you guys will be able to see a little bit better what's going on with the marks. Hopefully I can get it to zoom. There we go. Okay, let me just do the focus again, like that. Okay, there. Now maybe you guys can see a little bit better what's going on. And actually, let me move my board over a little bit so you guys can see the rest of the chicken, like that. 
Okay, let's do some more. And I don't want to stick with only white. I definitely want to get in some other colors here. So if I really squint at the photo, does everybody see there's little tinges of like peach? And then down here it gets a little bit cooler. This is a little bit more lavender. And this is where, gosh, sharpen your eye. It's like we were talking about in these streams about really working your eye, training your eye to see those colors in there. Right now, this is too much color. I, I definitely don't wanna leave it that way, but I'm just throwing it in and then I'll layer some of the white on top of that to tone it down. Yeah, this is very orange up there. I think it's probably some of the reflected light that's coming from the hay in the back. That's probably what it is. Oh God, this the Sennelier is, it, it's too messy for me. I, I feel like if I did use it, I would use it in moderation. I, I don't think I would use it by itself, at least for my way of working, it's a little bit too much. Okay, I'm gonna go in with some of this stuff. See if I can, like, like this is like paste. Do you guys see that? Oh my God, it's so mushy. Like th this is almost like paint. That's how thick it is. Jeez. All right, let's just push out the density of this. Actually, let's put a little baby oil on so you guys can see. The baby oil makes it really, really slippery. Don't use too much. Like I actually put too much on my hand, but it, it can save your fingers. Cause I know a lot of people sort of rub their fingers raw when they're doing a drawing, but you don't wanna do that. That's gonna hurt after a little while. I wanna bulk up this form. I mean, if you guys want something like creamy, this is definitely the way to go. It's just for me, it's too creamy. I, I feel like I want just a little more dryness. It's sort of like, if you guys saw my Utah tutorial, it's sort of like that dry brushing technique I was talking about that I personally do want my drawings to have a little bit more bite to them. And for me, this is so mushy. At least for me, I would have trouble controlling that. Just make sure you guys take everything I say with a grain of salt, because just because it works for me, it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. Somebody was asking me in the Discord this morning, they were asking about, I think it's, is it draw a box? I, I've never heard of them before, but anyway, I guess they have some curriculum that is supposedly very grueling. <laughs> it's like you draw all these boxes and it teaches you linear perspective and stuff like that. And so the question, somebody said, well, listen, I was looking at your self-taught artist curriculum and I was looking at theirs and they're nothing alike. And I don't really get why they're so different. And I was like, because it, it's so different. It, depending on who you are, my suggestion is none of them are right. I'm not even right. But try them out. Try them all out. And, and ask yourself, which one do I like better? That, that's the more important thing, you guys. The other fun thing about the black, if you use black paper, you can actually draw around things. So I can actually go in with the black and draw in, like here it got very mushy, so I'm just drawing in the contour around that. And also in the feathers, like if I wanna make these sharper forms, then I can like blend in the black so it doesn't stick out so much. But this is nice when you wanna get a more specific contour because I think in oil pastels, edges are very important. Do you have a soft edge? Is it a messy edge? Actually, down here, I think I want to blend a little bit more, but this should really be more sharp. So edges are important, guys. Like this, I'm going to make very clean, very graphic edge, and that really changes your perception of the piece. Let's give him an eye, because <laughs> he needs it. Well, I don't know if this is a male. This is a female, is it? Because the males are roosters, aren't they? Ugh, I don't know. Somebody with better chicken knowledge better help me out. Okay, let me take a break and look at the chat. Yeah, like these, they're so much, like I have to clean my fingers 
in between. The Karen Dash, I don't have to do that. That's how mushy they are. Okay. <laughs> Sybil says, Sennelliers work wonderfully on a layer of Karen Dash. I'm starting to like that. I mean, the jury's still out. I'd have to do more work, but we'll see. Neil says, my mom raised me with cloth diapers. She's so tough dealing with all that poop. I did cloth diapers. Everybody thought I was insane. It's work, but oh my God, the diapers you go through, it's just terrifying. And Morning Atlas says, Mungo Gallery oil pastels are very creamy and easy to blend also. Yeah, see, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. Like for me, I'm not really that into blending. When I do charcoal drawing, I don't smudge very much with my finger. I do most of the work with an eraser. And so if you're really into blending, that's probably great. But if you're somebody like me and you want something a little bit harsher, a little bit more aggressive, the ones that are tighter and not so mushy like the Karen Dash are sometimes better. Okay, Maya Hika says, the chickens outside my house are all awake. I feel like I should be concerned. <laughs> I mean, it would be nice to have fresh eggs, but like I looked at that coop that those people had, it looked like a ton of work to maintain them. I mean, that said, they are really funny. Like I had such a good time hanging out with them. I don't know, maybe I should spend more time with animals. <laughs> I have guinea pigs, but... They're a little limited because they have to stay. Well, I mean, we have one guinea pig, Jub Jub, who he's such a spaz. He really likes going upstairs. And we never had stairs before because we're in a new house now. And he's really, really into the stairs. <laughs> Sybil is asking, are you gonna not going to do a stream on landscape with oil pastels? Sennelier would fit. We probably will. At some point, I think I'm doing another one in about a week. And I know a lot of people are asking me to do landscape, so I definitely will. It just bothers me to do landscape from a photo because I feel like landscape, the place, the smells, the atmosphere is such a big part of the experience. But I understand, obviously, if I don't do it, then <laughs> nobody really gets to see how to do that. But again, it depends on your approach. Like some people, their landscapes might be very creamy and very blendy but I actually really like drawing rough things. Like I'm a big texture person. So it really, really depends. Azure says, I do enjoy how you use other tools with your oil pastels instead of just the pastels and fingers. I mean, I sort of feel like that's to compensate for my lack of skill <laughs> with oil pastels. I feel like I can really have more fun with that, but my whole feeling is as long as it's safe, why not try something like that? I want to say thank you so much to Anna for the super chat. We greatly appreciate your support, you guys, because I want to make more for you. I've got so much content in my head. Like, it's a problem, like a quote problem <laughs> for us that we have so much content. Like every month I'm like, okay, finally we will get to this. And then the schedule feels like that. And then people are like, oh, let's do this. And I'm like, yes, 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 I want to do all these things. But I'll be honest with you guys, most of the time, the reasons I have to say no is because of budget, because we can't afford to get equipment and stuff like that. So if you guys can help us out, that would be wonderful. Comcuke is asking, are you ever going to use soft pastels in the stream? I love them. Yep. I think there's a stream mid month that is going to be soft pastels. I'll do a bunch of those because I know a lot of people are very interested in that. And Damini says, do you always use a reference or do you just memorize some stuff? I am so bad at trying from imagination, you guys. I can't do it. There are people who are so good at it. Like we did this stream a little ways back with Julie Ben Bassett, who is a guest artist and Kat. And they were just, making up these characters and they look so good. I, I can't do that. I do not have that skill. And I know some people feel that, 
oh, well, if you can't draw from imagination, that must mean you're not very skilled. I don't think that's the case. I think not using references is a problem if it's limiting your options. Like Deep Dee was saying the other day that she draws a lot from imagination, but she actually starts by looking at real life textures, shapes from nature. And so what you try to do is build up a visual vocabulary in your head. It's like you keep adding new words, but I, I just find real things so fun and so beautiful. And I, I just feel like if I'm left alone to my own devices, I don't have a lot of fun with that. That's my personal thing though. I mean, some people are probably really good at it. <laughs> Tom is asking, do oil pastels age well? I've heard that the wax blooms out over time in a work. I really don't know, Tom. I've not worked on them long enough and I don't have any that are really old that have been sitting around. So yeah, I mean, you probably have to talk to a conservator about that. I would imagine it also depends on the surface. I mean, the problem with pastels, oil and soft pastels, really the only way to preserve them is under glass. And that's a pain in the butt because it's really, really expensive <laughs> to have to frame everything that you're doing. Okay, let's go on and let's do some more gestures. I don't really feel like I'm totally ready to go yet in terms of doing one that's more finished. Oh, this guy's so weird looking. Okay, we might have to do this guy. <laughs> All right, let me, let me zoom out again because I wanna make sure you guys can see everything that's going on. Okay, there we go. All right. This guy's, he, what's up with your head? Like this chick is so, he's like so awkward. And actually, you know what I like about this drawing, you guys, is that it has very dramatic shadows. And that is really gonna help me a lot because actually, you know, I'm gonna draw this one really big because I don't know, the other two I was drawing are a little bit small. But one thing that is tricky is if you have a reference photo and the lighting is not very clear, I don't know, it's like it's flawed from the start. And so I sometimes see situations where, for example, oftentimes in the Discord, people will post a drawing and they'll say, oh, here's the reference. And I look at the reference and I'm like, oh my God, the reference is so flat. So actually that's not really your flaw that the reference is so flat, but that's why we have our reference collection at ArtProf is because it, it's hard to make good reference photos. And also if you don't have like a DSLR camera, you won't get the quality that you oftentimes need. So if you guys have suggestions for different topics you would like to see me try to cover in our reference photo, just let me know. I mean, I can't guarantee you're gonna get flamingo photos, but you'll get something, you'll get something interesting depending on who's house sitting that week and there is a zoo here in salt lake city that i have not been to yet so i definitely want to go there and actually there's an aviary here i want to go there too because birds are so weird even the ones that are supposed to be all graceful and everything are not they're just really spazzy now, notice what I'm doing right now is I block this out. I'm blocking out the highlights because I, what I might do is keep the darker colors thinner. And that is something very similar to actually what I would be doing if this was an oil painting. We were talking about Edward Hopper yesterday in the stream on color saturation and if you guys look at a hopper painting, one thing you will notice in real life, I don't mean digitally. If you look at it in real life, he builds up the thickness of his highlights and he keeps the paint in his shadows very thin. I mean, they're almost like washes, not quite, but very, very thin. And I suspect that that just gives the highlights a thicker, more luminous quality that they would not have if everything was built to the same level of density. So that's something I'd really encourage you guys to play with. And I'm gonna do that right now. 
So maybe here is really blue. You guys can't tell me that shadows are gray. They are not. They're so not gray. Maybe I can get, I should get this light blue. Okay, let's try that. It's lighter than the photo. Like that's actually sort of like if I squint, I think it's like a middle gray. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. I, I'm not really sure what's going to go on here. I, it could be that maybe this is not good enough. And maybe I do need to put the white on top, but I just want to try and see if I can get away with it because I might, I, I'm not sure. I mean, this is really blue, but guys, I think it's better for things to be too bright than too muddy. I mean, we were talking about muted colors yesterday in the stream, the, the poop colors. <laughs> Or I think Neil said peanut butter. Peanut butter is probably a nicer metaphor. But muted colors, I think, get the short end of the stick. Like nobody appreciates them. And they're doing all the hard work. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if I like that. I'm not sure. It could be maybe another pass over the blue. But what I was trying to say is that I do think, I mean, for me, it's much easier to draw too bright colors that are overly saturated and then to tone them down. I think it's much tougher to start muddy and get bright. You can, it's just not as natural. Because really, if you think about it, the longer that you draw with any media, it doesn't even matter if it's oil pastel, the more likely the colors are to blend and mix, in which case they do get muddier and muddier. So that can be very tricky as well for a lot of people. And I know the way I got over my fear of color was drawing with Caran d'Ache crayons, not the oil pastels, and drawing with really obnoxious, garish colors that I hated but they forced me to really understand the potential because everything, I was really trying to match colors for a long time. And that really was a problem for me because what I ended up doing was just underestimating the colors. Like I would always try to get them quote accurate, but then by trying to do that, they always ended up too gray. So that's a strategy. If you guys are struggling with more saturated colors, that's definitely something you can, see if you want to do in the future because somebody i believe in the chat yesterday mentioned that they were having trouble with saturated colors and i think that's a great option to explore like too bright on purpose and then getting in and making changes to tone it down much easier to get muddy from something saturated i mean guys really try colors that make you uncomfortable. Try doing colors that you're like, ugh, that looks bad, but do it. Do it anyway, see what happens. And really, I mean, is it gonna be the apocalypse, you guys? <laughs> Sometimes when I taught at RISD, it really felt like it was the apocalypse for a lot of the students. I'm like, guys, it's one drawing. Like, can't you sacrifice that experience just so you can learn something? Like there, there really are drawings like that that are not Drawings that are meant to look good, they're, they're meant to teach. It's a teaching drawing. So be willing to do that. I mean, I call them sacrifice drawings. They're like you decide in advance, this is not gonna be a good drawing. I'm gonna mess it up and who cares? If you go into every drawing with huge expectations and expecting things to look great, you're just gonna be disappointed. And that is no reflection on your Ability or background, that's just the process. I'm all out of like that white and I don't wanna use the Sennelier because it's like too mushy. Oh wait, here's another piece. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, I don't know if I like the approach I'm taking right now, but whatever, let's just try it. It'd be that bad, right? I don't know. <laughs> but I am looking at the density. Yeah, I don't think I can do this Really, yeah, I think I need to build it up more. I think it's just not translating right now. Or maybe I just need more lavender. I feel like 
this is maybe not enough contrast in here. Oh no. This guy's really funny looking. I might abandon him and start another one just to see where we can go. I'm gonna do a tiny bit more and then I'll do another one. Because I feel like this this drawing has taught me some things and now I wanna maybe try to apply them somewhere else. Okay, let's see what you guys are talking about in the chat. E Dog Boo says, does anyone have any suggestions for spray fixative? I always see different types, but don't want to ruin drawing or painting by spraying the wrong thing on top. Well, a lot of people will use something called workable fixative, and that is something you can use when you're not done with the drawing. But let's say you want to solidify it a little bit. And then I do think the surface is quite different when you work on it afterwards, because it's almost like there's a little separation layer. But in theory, you can go back and work on it. There's also Crystal Clear, which is made by Krylon. I mean, I usually use Krylon. That's generally the brand that I use for fixative. But Krylon Crystal Clear is permanent. So once you put that on, the expectation is that you're not going to go back in and work on it. Those are the two that I look at. I mean, they make so many sprays. There's like matte spray and there's spray you can get that has a sheen to it. But if you're just talking about average charcoal pencil drawing, I think that's totally fine. Crimson D says, don't bully the chicken for being awkward. <laughs> well, I mean, okay, if you guys had a body like this, you, you're gonna walk awkwardly. I mean, like, the anatomy is so funny. I mean, it just, sometimes it cracks me up that people make up creatures in movies because I'm like, dude, look at the real world. Everything is so weird. <laughs> so yeah. Maya Higa says, if you ever go to the zoo, please take some pictures. Yep, it's definitely on my checklist of 50,000 things that I want to do for all of you guys. Wow, you guys have a lot of thoughts about birds. <laughs> And Maria says, the red eye makes me think this is an assassin bionic chicken that came from the future to kill Sarah Connor from the Terminator movies. You know what, Maria? That would be honestly a better plot than Terminator Dark Fate. Oh my God, why did I watch that movie? That was a big, big mistake. <laughs> oh dear. And... Benedict says, hey, so happy I caught a stream. It's about six in England right now. Wow, that is dedication. Speaking of Benedict, I watched some Sherlock last night. You guys ever do this where you like really like something, but you can't watch it too much. It's kind of like Jordan in Spider-Verse. He said that he can't watch it too much because he likes it. So I took a really long Sherlock break. Like I'm taking a Michael Fassbender break. I haven't watched Jane Eyre in like a week. And, oh my God, it's so good. Like, when you haven't seen something that you really like for a long time, it's awesome. <laughs> Marina says, do you spray a painting? It depends on the paint type and also what you're trying to achieve. For example, if you're doing oil painting, you can use retouch varnish. And retouch varnish comes in a spray. You can also paint with it in acrylic. They have matte varnish, they've got satin varnish. Oh my God, there's just this whole world of varnishes. So you just have to do some research. And what I might do is if you're not sure, try out on an old painting that you don't care about because maybe it's something that you don't wanna mess up on a drawing that you really spent a lot of time. Parizad says, once I tried drawing a chicken, it stared at me until I got awkward. <laughs> like, what, you got awkward? <laughs> I was like, between the two, I would think that the chicken would be the more awkward one. But yeah, I, I don't know. I was kind of annoyed with the chicken. I'm like, come on, you guys, come out from under the branches. Like, please, just for like a second. Although it was hard to take photos of them because they're a little spastic and they're hard to follow. And I have very specific aspects that I want in a good reference photo. For example, you guys will notice that in all the reference photos of the chickens, none of them are cropped. Because 
what bothers me is if I have a drawing of a chicken, a photo of a chicken, and like the legs are not in there, that's annoying. But if you're drawing from it and you're like, oh, I don't want to include the legs, it's fine because you can just crop them out. And so I had a lot of photos of chickens that I shot where a little bit of feather was cut off or the top of the head or something. And so when I shoot photos, I shoot so many. And I probably deleted 75% of them. This is the best out of the batch. But yeah, there really is almost an art form to shooting a good reference photo that people can really use. Scott is asking, have you ever used oil bars and sticks? I have. I find them really blunt and really smeary. And I, if I use them, I probably would use them on like a really big painting. Like oil bars like this would drive me up the wall. And some of them are stinky. Like there's this one cadmium red. It's not like it's emanating fumes, but it's stinky. And I remember it bothered me so much. I know that's dumb. Adrian says, do you think using a blending stick is okay with oil pastels? Here's my feeling, you guys. It's okay. Everything. As long as you're not endangering yourself, your artwork, or somebody else, okay? I think just try it. You've got nothing to lose. If it doesn't work, do another one. It's totally fine. And again, if it works for you, then do it. It's fine. I don't have one right now. Maybe I'll go and get one later because honestly, I've never used one before. Fiona says, any tips on drawing birds properly because I have problems with it? Well, that's a great question because have you guys ever heard people say things like, I'm really good at drawing pigs, but I'm so bad at drawing Benedict Cumberbatch. And I'm like, fine. I know there's a whole psychological thing going on with Benedict and his voice. But if you guys really think about it, no matter what you're drawing, it's the same fundamentals. Like if I'm drawing Benedict, I'm gonna see his, well, anyway, I'm gonna see big shapes, okay? Same thing with the chicken. I'm gonna draw big shapes. I'm gonna look at Benedict and how the highlights fall on his cheekbones, the same way I'm gonna look at the highlights on the chicken. And so technically speaking, whether you're drawing a cardinal or a bald eagle, or a slice of toast with avocado on it, the approach really is the same. So I would just recommend don't tell yourself, oh, because I'm drawing a bird and not Hugh Jackman, oh, I need to change my technique. You don't actually. A lot of it is actually extremely similar. And Violet is asking, can you do a video using the Grisai method in oil someday? Also, I have to say you have the best laugh. Oh, good, because my kids think it's annoying. <laughs> They're like, I can hear you laughing from the other side of the house. Although everything I do is annoying. <laughs> For them, I mean, they're teenagers, so of course. Well, one of them is a teenager, so of course that's going to happen. But we can, for sure. There's so much I want. I, you guys have no idea how frustrating it is for me. There's so much I want to do. But we need me to stop doing all the spreadsheets and emails and administrative tasks. Because honestly, that's what's really taking over my life right now. That takes so long. Eli is asking, what camera do you use for shooting reference photos? If I really care about it, I will use my DSLR camera. But if it's something fast and I don't feel like I need a lot of detail, I'll just use my phone. But Again, it depends on the results that you guys are looking for. But in my opinion, it's always better, I think, to have something that has more resolution rather than less. Let's do, I think I want to do this guy at the, well, hmm. The thing is, my paper is horizontal. So let's do this guy. <laughs> okay, let me maximize this. Oops, sorry and we'll get started on another one. Okay, pull up my reference photo. All right, so let's spend a little bit more time at this one because I, I did warm up quite a bit with the other one. See, to me, this reference photo, it's fine and I can totally use it. But if I were to critique my own reference photo, the thing I don't like about it is that the hay that's behind the chicken 
is making it hard for me to see the contour of the chicken. Oh my God, I thought this was a white oil pastel and it's purple. Yeah, that's that's a fail, sheesh. Where's my white? Is that white? I think it is. Yeah, that's white, okay. <laughs> but so the, the fact that the hay in the back is such a similar color to the actual chicken itself. That that for me is a little bit annoying because I can't see the contrast very well. So th this photo is fine. It, it's going to get me through, but it's not ideal. I mean, if I had the time, I would have spent a week with the chickens and really gotten exact. But I only had that afternoon, so I didn't really have time to do that. Although the family member was like, you can come hang out with them anytime. I'm like, cool. <laughs> okay. You know what I did in the other drawing that I don't like? I think if I go back to this one, this chicken on the right is too liney. I don't like that. This one is a little bit better, but I think it's because it didn't have a lot of patterns on it. And this one I do think got too liney. So what I'm going to do I'm gonna to try to build up just a layer with the side so I don't forget about the big shapes. And because so much of this is yellow, I do have to put a white foundation down first to be able to do anything. In fact, a lot of the white I'm just gonna pop out because it is really dramatic. Oh man, you guys, those feathers are gonna be a pain. Can't you tell, you know, you can just enter, you're like, oh, that's going to be such a pain to draw, but I'll take it. It's, it's a challenge. I mean, I can't remember the last time I drew, have I ever drawn, I, maybe I, I'm sure I've drawn a chicken at some point in my life. I have no idea when. I've definitely drawn penguins. I remember that. But yeah, I mean, a lot of people want us to do streams with animals and... So we'll, we'll definitely try to do more of that. Okay, and now at the very least, I want to just place the color here. Actually, this is a good lesson. So during the stream that Jordan and I did yesterday about color saturation, we had some people asking us, well, I really have trouble getting the same color again. That just drives me crazy. Like I mix the blue and oh man, I can't get it back. And that's driving me crazy. In my opinion, I'm not sure it's such a great idea to be so rigid about your color expectations because here's the thing. You're going to run out of a color. You're just going to. Like, I don't know anybody who can mix their colors in such perfect quantities that they never have to remix. Everybody has to do that to a certain degree. So what I would say, embrace the fact that the color <clears throat> will be a little bit different every single time. That can work to your advantage. You'll get more variation and maybe the colors won't feel so dull. So I would do that. And then the other thing I'd recommend is to keep in mind that color is contextual. It doesn't have anything to do with the right blue or the right yellow or, oh, I mixed this correctly. It's not like that, guys. And what I'm doing now, which I didn't bother with the others because I was just warming up, I am gonna try to do a little bit of the straw that's around the chicken. Not a huge amount, but enough that you can tell what's going on. So I'm just gonna sketch super light, at the very least, just to show a little bit of the texture and that I think is very helpful. I don't think that's everybody's first impulse because you sort of think, oh, chicken, the chicken's the most important thing. Yeah, it is. It is the most important thing. And that is why I'm here. It's all about the chickens. But you guys see up here what a pain in the butt it would be to draw these feathers if I don't put in the negative space back here. Because look at this now the feathers of the chicken are gonna pop because I have that background tone. And I, I love the texture of the hay, so that's why I'm putting it in. 
But look at this, like this feather and the way it comes down like that, that would not happen if I didn't do that stuff. And even here, I'm gonna draw the silhouette of these feathers like that. So sometimes you guys, to really define something well, you don't draw the thing, you draw the thing around the thing. Sometimes that's way more helpful. Let's bulk up this white because that's actually pretty substantial. And I'm gonna try to get more adventurous with my marks. I slowed down a little bit in the last one. I don't like that. So I'm gonna try to really use the tip more. I wasn't doing that enough. I, I got a little distracted with the other stuff. But I want to show more, I think, the direction of the marks. Because you don't want your marks to all go the same way. You want a little bit of variety. Well, at least I do. Maybe some people like that. But it's again, it's a stylistic choice. It doesn't have anything to do. That's the thing, you guys. There's nothing in art that is correct. The Well, no, no, I take it back. <laughs> There's one thing that's correct. Linear perspective is correct. That That you really do have to... It's, it's right or wrong, but most other things are not like that in art. All right, so here I'm getting in some black because I love the, the just drama of these feathers. It's really fun. And I don't want this to stay so flat because I find that really distracting. So just really briefly, I just want to suggest that there's more texture back here and that it's not quite so flat because the flatness I think would be frustrating to work with. I don't know guys, I'm kind of having more fun with the grass <laughs> than I am with the chicken, is that silly? That's not really what I'm supposed to be doing, but who cares? I don't care, I just wanna have fun with this. I mean, somebody had asked earlier about what do I do if it's not fun anymore? Honestly, these, draw alongs for me, they're more fun sometimes than when I'm doing my own stuff because there's a freedom to it. I know that when the draw alongs are over, the drawing is over and I'm not really gonna, well, sometimes I work on it a little bit more, but not very much. And it, it's like a little respite, a little vacation from what you might normally be doing. So it's sort of like what somebody had mentioned earlier about just try to take a vacation from your normal technique and do something else. Yeah, back here there's this like light maroon. Let's see if I can find like a reddish color back here. I am gonna tone it down because that's way too bright. But yeah, this negative space, oh, so helpful. Like I really feel like I can see the contour of the chicken now, it's, it's nice. Oh, too smudgy. I need to go and buy like way more of these whites. So now when I put in this white edge, which I am going to push in with the Sennelier so I can get a nice clean graphic edge. Now it really pops a lot better. I have to try really hard not to be seduced by all the line work because there is a lot of it. But I think what I need is like a base first and, and really get the, this portion to pop. Think about edges, you guys. Edges are everything, okay? And, and oil pastel, really important. Like that's a very crisp edge that I have right now. And I'm just really gonna try to articulate that better. Yeah. Okay, so that's blocked in. Oh God, I don't even wanna do these feathers. I know these are gonna drive me crazy. I mean, they're fun. I, you gotta make it fun, okay? Don't dread stuff. Like just like what I just did, don't do that. <laughs> what I just <laughs> thought to myself. And see these feathers here, the really stripy ones? I think, I'm gonna block them in with like a gray. Actually, I need a gray. Let's see. I think like a light gray would be good. So, ow, let's break that. Because I don't want these feathers to be as bright as the white ones. So this will give them just like a step down in tone 
for me to understand that a little bit better because some of them do stand out a little bit more, not all of them, but I'm trying to get these marks in there. All right, let's see what people are talking about in the chat. Chrono is asking, what paper is that? It's boring ass construction paper. <laughs> it's the type of stuff that you would probably give to elementary school kids. It's really cheap. It comes in a big pack. I sort of wish I had pastel paper that was more textured because I like that, but this is fine. I mean, this is not bothering me at all. Cother is asking, can we mix oil pastels with oil painting? I think you can. I think as long as the surface you're working on is gessoed, I mean, that's really all you need to have for oil painting. I can't speak to the longevity of that. You probably would have to speak to somebody who's a conservator to get an accurate answer. And Cother is also saying, I feel oil pastels work only on black canvas because I tried to paint along with you on white canvas and it didn't work at all. You can use white canvas, but it's like four times the work. <laughs> That's the difference. One of the reasons I don't like working on white paper for oil pastel is because the grain of the white paper really shows up. And to get rid of that white grain, you have to put down so much. You've got to put down like four times the amount that I'm putting on now. So I just feel like this is way more easy to control. I don't have to work so hard and it's a lot, lot easier, but it doesn't have to be black. I mean, you could definitely use like a neutral gray color or sometimes they have pastel paper that's a neutral green or a blue or something. So just try all different colors and then you guys can figure out what you want to do later on. Uh, Adrian is asking, what other media do you think goes well with oil pastels? Definitely oil bars, which is what somebody had mentioned earlier. And again, oil paint or whatever painting stuff you want to do. I mean, here's the thing, guys. Like the imagination thing, I'm not good at mixed media, okay? It's not my thing. I'm very jealous of people <laughs> who are good at mixed media, but it's not my tendency. I, I tend to be a little bit more of a purist and I don't feel great about that, but I don't have a ton of experience mixing media. So yeah, that's really tricky. KB Draw says, I'm so happy I finally caught one of these having a lot of fun with the chickens. Awesome. I'm so excited to see what you guys make. And remember, draw along with me. Post what you make in the Art Prof Discord in the Art Alongs channel. And if you missed it, the links to the reference photos, they're in the YouTube video description below. Those are high res images. You guys can download those for free. Tony says, why did you put those blue marks in the hay? Because in the hay, there are these dark pockets and a lot of people would look at the photo and say, well, Clara, there's no blue there. Why are you putting blue there? The reason I did it is because this yellow ochre, it's a little bit orangey. And so if I put blue here, do you see how the blue pops? I could totally put black oil pastel and I would get the contrast in terms of value, but here I'm getting color contrast. So that's the difference. And so that's what I mean by being less literal about your colors. Just because it's black in the photo, it doesn't mean you have to draw it black. I mean, you can, I just don't think it's as fun and I think the color is not quite as exciting. And Maria says being oil-based, maybe water-based media can work together without messing the oil pastel. Probably, I mean, I would guess if you say started with colored pencil, put the oil pastel on top of it, it would be fine. I guess I was thinking before like blending it together, like actually mixing it together with something else. Karen is saying oil pastel doesn't dry. Oh yeah, okay, so Elizabeth says you can't mix them. Oil pastel never dries because of the mineral oil, baby oil. Okay, yeah, I really talk to a conservator, guys. I'm sorry, I just don't have that expertise going on. All right, 
let me get rid of that comment so we can get back to some drawing. Okay. Let's see what this guy has to offer us. I'm gonna just maximize my photo. By the way, I don't know what device you guys are drawing from, but it really helps make the photo you're working from as big as possible. Because if you're drawing from like a teeny tiny section, it's, it's difficult. So what I do oftentimes is I'll put it on my laptop, but then I'll maximize it. I'll make it as, as large as I possibly can. Guys, you know what I think it's time for? <clears throat> it's time for me to make a mess. <laughs> I don't know, I was feeling all in control and I'm like, oh, I can't do that. There's too much here that needs to get worked on for me to try to control it. So I'm just gonna, I'm gonna make a mess and I'm cool with that, that's fine. I really wanna get the drama of that big section, but I think I'm really needing maybe some oranges in here to, actually, I wanna use the side because I think I'm getting picky too fast. I think I'm getting into details before I've established the foundation I mean, details are fun, you guys. It, it's the funnest part. It's like when you're baking a cake, you finally get to put on all those little frills. It's like very exciting, but it's like you can't do that if it's still batter. And you're not going to put frosting on top of uncooked batter. That's, that's kind of what you're doing if you're getting to those details too soon. I'm going to try to draw a little more ferocious. I kept saying I was going to do it, and I don't feel like I'm doing it still. It's a little bit frustrating. It's like every time I sit down, I have goals. For example, one thing I do very often, and tell me in the chat if you guys do this, I look back on my last drawing session and I ask myself, what did I do in that session that I'm gonna do differently this time? And I was working on Timothy Chalamet <laughs> last night way too late. I couldn't sleep. So I decided to get up and do that. And I, I felt picky. And so that's why when I came down to today's stream, I thought, okay, you're not going to pick. You're going to be gestural and you're going to get all those qualities in there. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. Oh, I need some burnt sienna. Like there's these little pieces of burnt sienna down here at the bottom. So let's get those marks in there. And a lot of people, I think, really try to go piece by piece. I'm looking at the chicken for sure, but I'm not looking that hard. Like, I'm not going feather by feather. I just, I don't like it. It's boring. <laughs> but I do like these, like, graphic shapes. Like this little black section, this little patch. I'm not somebody who's into accuracy. I, I just, it's boring. It's kind of like the boxes, like people were talking about the draw box thing. I was like, I, I'm bored. I can't do it. I, I, it's sort of like, yeah, I know it's good for me. I know you can learn this, but I, I just, I'm too bored. I just don't have the attention span for that. <laughs> and I know that's probably not very good advice. I probably should be telling you guys, yeah, do it, be disciplined. And I'm like, I, I can't recommend something that I can't do myself. I feel like that's like super hypocritical. So that's why I don't have you guys drawing boxes in our self-taught artist curriculum, which by the way, if you guys wanna access that, the stream that we did the other day, self-taught artist curriculum, I think it was like a couple days ago. It's in the YouTube video description. In general, all the stuff that we talk about, if it's an artist, if it's a resource, it's usually in the video description. And if it's not, it usually means I forgot, in which case one of you smart people will tell me. I love it. People catching all my, my little things. I love it. It's great because I, I hate it when stuff is, like if there's a typo that drives me crazy, but I don't always see it. So it's really helpful. Have people looking out for you. I appreciate that so much. Okay. It's still pretty messy. I feel like I need some clarity in here. So maybe some black. I'm not a fan 
of using lots of black, especially towards the beginning of a drawing. But that particular area with the tail, it's so graphic that I think if I don't use the black, I'm gonna get lost. So I'm gonna slow down a lot and really try to understand what's going on here in terms of the shapes. Oh, the sennelier is, ugh. it feels gross on my fingers too. That's another thing that's difficult, but I don't know. It's sort of good for these bright white areas that I, I really want to bring out. So I don't know, maybe it's not such a bad thing. I don't know. I, I don't think I've worked with it enough to really feel that I can assess it that well, but we'll do more of these streams. I believe there's at least one more oil pastel stream this month. So we'll definitely get into that. All right, I just gotta peel this black. Let's get in there and really sharpen some of these shapes. Again, using the negative space that is surrounding the form to get that across. Oh, geez. Yeah, if I use the Sennelier, it, it's gonna be with moderation. It's not gonna be something substantial. Okay, here, I lost this tail a little bit. Let's put that back. Now, if you guys look at this upper section, do you see how up here, this is like really smooth? But then over here, there are two marks of burnt sienna that are pretty dramatic. And then there's a little bit of a highlight in here. I'm trying again to be really conscious of what, what are the edges like? It's pretty fluffy up here. That's the name of my guinea pig, by the way. <laughs> I have fluffy and wheat, because he's the color of wheat, and jub jub. Although we have like 10,000 names for them. You, you guys ever do this? It's like your, your pet has this name, but it's like you call them all these different things. <laughs> fluffy is fluber. And actually, my favorite thing to call jub jub is jubathan like Jonathan, <laughs> like if I get mad at him, I'm like, Jonathan, <laughs> it's like, I don't know. I really want to integrate this background because I think that's what makes this more fun. I think without the background, this would be really boring. Those of you who are drawing along with me, how many of you are drawing the backgrounds or did you <laughs> chicken out? Oh, sorry, I couldn't resist. <laughs> did you chicken out? on doing the background. Sure, some of you guys did and it's fine. It's fine if you wanna do that, but I do think the background makes for a more interesting experience and it does challenge you more to see the piece as a working whole as opposed to just one thing. And that that can be really good, you guys. That That can, help you see the composition more holistically, which is really fun. Okay, so this is more defined. Actually, these are all pretty sharp edges. I'm gonna go back in with some of that blue, just more texture. Again, I'm not looking that carefully, guys. I'm just trying to capture the general feeling of the straw. And in here, this is pretty, mushy, but I think I'm going to do another pass of white on top like this. Get some more of that, that fuzziness. Oh, that, that's kind of cool. Hey, Sennelier. Hey, what did you do? You know, I did, I drew with the side. It was well, not really the side. It's sort of like the side of the tip. I kind of like that texture. All right. May maybe I do like <laughs> Sennelier. I don't know. A lot of this is trial and error. Like I, I certainly can help you guys with certain recommendations and I can tell you what has worked for me, but sometimes you just got to try it and just see, Hey, what, what worked, what did not and why it's all trial and error. Cause what works for one person may not work for somebody else. And honestly, that's the reason why we have so many staff artists 
because actually when I first envisioned Art Prof, I, I sort of thought about it as like my own cooking show that I would just show people stuff. But it's like, you learn really quickly. You're like, oh, I am not good at this. I need somebody who really knows this. And so, you know, that's where I bring in people that are better than me. That's, that's the key guys. You gotta work with people that are better than you. It's very handy. Hey. I'm kind of liking you, Sennelier. Okay, maybe I, maybe I was too quick <laughs> to judge. I'm sort of liking this texture that's on top. I think, cause it is, oh, this is starting to pop out. It is fun for where I wanna get these marks. Hmm. I'm kind of liking that. Let me make this a little bit darker because I think that the lighting has changed a little. Hang on, that's a little bit too dark. Okay, let's try that. Maybe that'll look better. I need more st straw for sure. You know what I need right now, guys? I like really need Naples yellow so bad, but they don't make a Naples yellow oil pastel. That's really annoying. They should. Maybe they do in the bigger set. I don't have the big set right now, so I honestly have no idea. But maybe if I got a bigger set, maybe they would have like a Naples yellow. I, I don't know. I'm not really the expert on oil pastel sets. All right. It might be time to tackle some of those little stripes in there. Now, I, I need more. No, that's not the right color. Oh, guys, look at this. This is why I can't find the right color because everything's gray and yucky. It's really hard. Where is the burnt sienna? I'm just like so lost. This is not the burnt sienna. I, did I use it all up? Maybe this is, I have no idea. Yeah, like in here, this is pretty saturated and I don't want to go without really addressing that. So many marks. Oh man. I might for some of these like darker strokes, little touches of purple in here. Like just to show the texture. Because even the parts of the chicken that look smooth are not really smooth. They actually have quite a bit of surface to them. I'm having fun with this. Who's having fun drawing right now? I am because it doesn't matter what happens to this drawing. I mean, yeah, all these people are watching, but ugh, I don't know, you sort of get over that really fast. <laughs> Once you've done enough streams, you're like, yep, it's all out there. Oh, that's kind of a nice surface there. Okay, what I need, I need some negative space because I'm losing the edge of the foot. I don't like that. Like this whole area is getting really messy. And it's a little bit confusing. So if I go in, maybe just like little bits of white just to pull out like back here. Oh, and I never went back and did this. I should jump up here. Yeah, because this is a much more neutral color. So actually because this is a magenta and I'm trying to make it more toned down, I could put green on top. Those of you guys who have been doing the color streams know why. Because it's the complementary color. And now it's too much. <laughs> so let's go back in and add a little bit more of that magenta color. Because I think I killed it now. A little bit too green. It's hard to control sometimes. Okay, that's a little bit better. And actually, I am going to add a couple highlights to this area. Oh, and this is fun. Look at that. Oh, the Sennelli are so good for that. And I'm going to go in and, and do a little smudging and then another pass on top of that. Oh, that's good. Sweet. All right. I think I'm kind of liking this now. And maybe some more articulation on the eye. Okay, let's see what you guys 
are saying in the chat. Ginny says, I couldn't see the reference pic very well because it is small on a phone. Well, did you download the photos? Because if you guys go down to the YouTube video description, I have links to the high resolution images. So I really recommend downloading those because if you try to draw on off of the phone from the video, it's, it's a pain in the butt. So I would recommend doing that. Kai Ayla says, the right side of the artwork kind of looks like a lion. Now I can't unsee it. Does anyone else see that? Oh, for sure. Oh my gosh. I mean, this, this chicken's a diva. I mean, can't you imagine this chicken like on the runway, like strutting its, I totally can see that. Absolutely. And I think that's fine. This is a cool tip. Elizabeth is saying, I've been using a plastic gift card to scrape off so I can fix. Cool. What? works you guys I mean there's such funny things about what will work and sometimes it's just hey this is on my table I'm gonna use it and Karen says I have too much background have to find the edges again chickens rule it's a back and forth okay so you guys might put down a mark to make something brighter and then it gets too dark and then it gets too light and then it gets too dark. So you have to keep finding ways to resurrect certain parts of your drawing and that's fine. It's back and forth. I think sometimes, tell me if you guys think this is the case or have thought this is the case. A lot of people think that, oh, well, if I'm drawing, everything should just get better all the time. Like it should, increasingly get better as I go along. Like better, 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 better. It, it's not like that, guys. <laughs> not, not for me. Maybe it is for somebody here, but it's not for me at all. And a lot of times it gets much worse before it gets better. You know what is nice about the Sennelliers too? Is they're so thick that smudging is actually pretty easy. So I do like that about these. I guess my take on the Sennelliers is I just, I wouldn't use them by themselves. I, I would definitely use them with another pastel because they're just sort of unmanageable on their own. Um, okay, it's really time to do these stripey things. So I'm gonna actually do it with the white. I know a lot of people might think it would be better to do it with the brown and I might go back in and add some more brown later, but for now, it's just going to be little marks of white that bring me down like this. It's kind of fun. Ooh, I sort of like that. Yeah, and let's, oh my God, that just totally mushed. Yeah, that's, that's really, really mushy. And actually, let's use some of this. Ooh, that's kind of fun. Maybe I should do it with this too. Like just scrape it. Oh, wow, that, that literally is like oil pastel paint. You know what I bet you could do? I bet, I wanna try this next time actually. I don't have it right now, but I would love to put a blow dryer <laughs> on this thing and melt it into a paste and then scrape it on like paint. I bet that would be fun. We should, we should try that next time. I just don't have a hair dryer handy. I want to make this slicker, show more lines. And by the way, you guys, I do think with oil pastel, if you can draw bigger, because even now I feel a little bit constricted in this situation. And if I were to do this again, I think I would make it double the size. It's just for live streams, it's hard to fit physically with my setup. And I do want to make this part darker. I feel like I lost some of the shading because I got so into the white. And so some of this got a little lost in the process. Like if I put in some burnt sienna towards the bottom, this just helps a little bit with value. We were talking a lot about the difference between value and saturation yesterday. 
And I do think with color, people tend to forget about value. Like you, usually saturation is the one that wins because it's just easier to think about, but you got to think about value. So that's what I was doing down here. I was realizing, oh, the value is too light. So I want to push that to be a little bit on the darker side. Yeah, because this this really should be brighter. So let's let's punch up some of what's happening here so that we can get that contrast back. Push this. Because I'm looking at how like there's a shadow under here. So I do want to give this more structure. So here's the thing, you guys. I'm getting there. But one thing that gets very tricky at this stage, there is such a thing I think is too much texture where your drawing starts to subdivide so much that it starts to break apart. So it starts to feel very fragmented. So what I'm going to try to do right now is to like revive some of the more simple graphic shapes so that it doesn't feel like all these little tiny pieces coming together. I need that gray. Here we go. Oh, we have a comment here from Temple Moore who says, Sennelier Naples Yellow is number 21. Oh, so it does exist. I'm gonna have to pick up some Naples Yellow then. That's awesome. Great, so it looks like I'm gonna have to go to the art store and see what's going on. Danya says, I have used my pancake griddle with paper over on a low heat to melt crayons and draw. Pastels could be awesome with good paper. That is really cool. I think I'm gonna have to try that. You know what else, you guys? Somebody told me this jewelry maker, they said that for making jewelry, they oftentimes use a pasta machine, right? To make like flat noodles. I was like, oh my God, that is brilliant. I don't know, like I'm a really big fan of like repurposing ordinary items for artwork. Like when I used to teach elementary school art, we always used ice cube trays for paint palettes, brilliant. And we always use those garlic presses to make hair for clay. Like, I just think that's so much fun. So yeah, any, any trick you guys have, use it. Whatever works. All right, we gotta do those stripes. I think for this one, it's so small. Actually, there's a lot of brown. It's really, I'm overusing the black, you guys. Don't do that, okay? Don't do what I'm doing. I feel like half the time that's my lesson. Don't do what I just did. <laughs> but sometimes teaching is really like that. Sometimes it is more clear to people when you tell them what not to do rather than what to do. Sometimes you need to hear that. Like, don't roll a pencil through the printmaking press. That's a bad idea. Don't pour plaster down the sink. <laughs> that actually happened once at an art school that I taught at. A student literally poured plaster down, like a lot, not a small quantity. And uh, it cost them $50,000, the school, to replace all the damage. So yeah, that, that was not smart. Don't recommend doing that. All right, this needs brighter white because actually this one's pretty high in contrast. So let me push this one down. Maybe I'll use, no, I probably need black for this to make sure the patterns are substantial enough. Although it is getting a little bit mushy. Uh, hmm. I don't know, jury's still out on this. I think the key thing is to suggest the patterns. I don't, I don't think the patterns have to be super precise. I think you just want to hint that they're there. So I'll go back in here. And, oh yeah, we probably need some here. I feel like I'm missing it. And if I can beef that up, Yeah, because the white is wider towards the top. It gets smaller. 
towards the bottom. I feel like I'm using the black too much, but the thing is, it's so smeary that it's really hard to not use it. Oh, this is it. You guys, it's this. This one feather has to be more prominent. That's it. I, I totally screwed that up. See up here, I don't have the highlight. That's what I need. I need it like this. Because this form was not separate enough. And I'm trying to clarify some of these edges going out like that. Is that better? Oh, I, I still think more articulation on the side. Oh, and I didn't do the ones over here. Shoot. Oh my God, there's so many of them. Totally ignored that. I mean, this is tricky because it's a pattern, but you don't want it to be too precise. So sometimes what I do, I'll still draw the pattern too precisely and then I'll smear it kind of like that. Hmm. I need Naples yellow. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? I don't have Naples yellow. <laughs> you get used to certain colors being there for you. And then when they're not, you just cry. Yeah, this, this chicken's a mess. And got to work on these edges because they're really smooth. Like, see this one? And then this one is super smooth. That definitely helps, but I think I need to do more. I'm squinting now, guys, because we're getting towards some of the really detailed stuff. And I, I need that crispness from the drawing. Ugh, too much black, guys. Don't, don't do what I did. I got too reliant on the black. That was not smart of me to do that. I do want to bring out some of this negative space and maybe a tiny bit of the pattern coming in here. Who, who's doing the patterns right now? Anybody struggling with the patterns? Because it, it can feel like, oh man, there's so much to draw, but sometimes you don't have to work that hard. Like I think sometimes if you pick at it, it's not such a good thing. Okay, fixing those edges. More squinting. Yeah, I know like that drawing I did of Timothy Chalamet, I think that's how you say his name. I know some people wanted me to do a third stream, but seriously, like half of it would have just been me looking at my drawing. Like I wouldn't have really done anything that was that fun or exciting to watch. But I don't know. I mean, some people tell me they get a lot out of it because they get to see the final resolution, and that's not always so clear a lot of the times. I think I need to work on the this part because I've sort of been ignoring it the whole time. Not a huge amount because it's not really the most important part, but I do want to like beef up this red. And actually, in order to beef off the red, I have to draw around it. So that's like what we were saying earlier about how you have to draw what's around it to really get that to function. So if I put in some of the hay back here, that is definitely going to help with the red. I don't know. I'm sort of having, I love the hay. The hay is so fun. It's so many textures and layers. Like I feel like, I feel like I'm channeling Anselm Kiefer. <laughs> If you guys don't know who Anselm Kiefer is, look him up. He's like the king of texture. I love his paintings. They're beautiful. He's a contemporary painter. There is a big article about him in the New York Times, actually, pretty recently. Yeah, I really want to just do another pass. And I am going to try back here because actually there's a lot of highlight and I didn't put any back here. Oh, geez. Yeah, I'm curious who who's doing the background. 
it's fun. <laughs> I recommend it. It's a good thing to add. Gets that context for what you're drawing. Yeah, see, like back, this is really light, this area here that's behind the tail. Like, I actually think that's one of the reasons why that's not popping for me very well is because I didn't really do very much on the background. And this should help for sure. Yeah, like back here, this is all pretty light as well. So if I can just, at the very least, just throw something back there, it will make a big difference. Okay, let's see what people are saying in the chat. Ultra Violence says, I was wondering anyone has experience with those soft and oil pastels and how they compare. They're really different. I mean, soft pastels are chalky and powdery. I mean, they're basically like colored charcoal. I mean, the feeling is different, but that's the, like, these are smeary and oily and there's no powder involved. So that's the main thing. Violet Sky says, the more I watch this, the more I want to try them, but I don't need more art supplies, or do I? Use what you guys have. Any media, I know I'm using oil pastels, but tons of people use all different kinds of supplies for these draw-alongs. <laughs> Carrie Ann says, I'm getting cross-eyed with the patterns. I totally get that. Ayane says, patterns are always a struggle. Maybe that's why I'm not good at fur. I can do hair straight, but not really the pattern of fur. I also struggle to stylize it, which is probably because I can't draw it normally. Just draw it more. I think a lot of the issue is sometimes people just don't work on it much because oftentimes, at least with a portrait, people are so into the face that they end up not really working on the hair very much. But if you guys prioritize it and you really make it something that you want to work with, I think you can get there. It's just, you have to focus on what's happening. Ayane is asking, I like the orange and blue compliments here. Was that intentional? Yes, it was. <laughs> Complimentary colors are definitely on my mind lately because we're on this like color stream marathon here at ArtProf. Olivia says, absolutely love this little chicken. Beautiful pastels. So helpful to see your technique. I really struggle with pastels. I love the color use and the textures. Well, thank you so much, Olivia, for coming to hang out with me. <laughs> Brian says, exploding kitten is greater than exploding chicken is getting fierce. <laughs> Violet Sky says, I always thought of these as crayons, but you've certainly changed my mind. You know what it is? I think it's learning to get past our preconceptions over what we think a material should look like. For example, if you guys think about charcoal, people think charcoal should look a certain way. People think that acrylic should look like this. But that's never the case, you guys. I mean, depending on how you decide to manipulate things. I, I've seen charcoal drawings, honestly, that look like paintings that have a really painterly quality to them. So it, it really, really depends. There's no absolute sure outcome to any of that stuff. By the way, a lot of this blue you got, it, I know it looks blue to you, it's purple. So I'll, I'll show you in the Discord what it actually looks like because it actually does not look like that. I mean, that, that's the problem with live streaming is you can't hook up like super accurate lighting and stuff the, the way I would for like our studio tutorials, which we actually take the time to like edit and everything. Oh God, which speaking of editing, I'm so behind on those. You know, I have like four tutorials that are just waiting around to be released and it just makes me sad because I really want to release them. But one woman production company and can't afford to hire a pro editor. So yeah. All right. I need more color in here. Maybe just a little bit of 
brown. I, I just feel like I got so gray back there. It's really bugging me. Like if I toss in some of this orange, maybe that'll bring back all the brown in there. I just, ugh, I really went too crazy with the black. I don't know. My problem is I really like black. I love luscious Greek mythology, Hades, darkness, underworld black. It's just so cool. It's hard for me to say no to that. It's getting there. And Orange Cat is saying, did I miss any donations? Yeah, we had a bunch at the beginning of the stream. Thank you guys so much for your support. Comcuke says, you can make good art with even the crappiest of materials. It just might take more work. Yeah, or you have to shift something in your approach, but that's true. You don't need expensive brushes or super expensive paint to make a good painting. Yeah, there are some things that are better for me, but it depends. I mean, I definitely have seen people use really cheap supplies. Like I had this former teacher, he made these sculptures out of cardboard, Elmer's glue and paper towels. I know that sounds like the crap, like literally the crappiest materials, but he made beautiful sculptures. And I was like, more power to you. Emily says, first time having an art teacher say they like black. Well, here's the thing. It depends on the material. I think black is a little bit different in oil painting because in oil painting, you're actually mixing colors. I'm not mixing colors here. Like I have to rely on layering with the colors. And so that does change how you use the black because I, I can't mix black in terms of oil pastels the way that I can for the oils. Mira is saying, I like how you built up the drawing. It was really helpful to watch. Cool. I'm so glad that's helping you guys because there's so many speed paints online where people speed up the process. And yeah, those are fun. They're satisfying, but you don't really learn from that because you don't really understand what the pacing is and what the physical process is because everything just looks the same. But I think it's important for you guys to see when I'm drawing quickly, when I slow down, when I draw aggressively and you miss all those things when you speed things up. You don't see when things shift up in terms of rhythm. Sensation says you have a very cocky approach with this instruction. <laughs> I love that. Seriously though, loving your show, asking humbly, will you be establishing those darks in the waddles and comb? They seem a bit flat. They do. I probably should work on those a little bit more. You guys are asking all these great questions. So right now I'm getting distracted from that. And Ravel says, I feel generally artists hate black because beginners tend to mix their shades to make them darker with it. And that makes everything muddy. Yeah, that, that's primarily the reason is people use black as a crutch. They use it to fall back on. And because they're using that, they're not exploring other options. So it's not that, oh, black paint is wrong. Never, I mean, it's fine. You can use black paint. It's just that you need to explore the other possibilities first. And if you don't do that, in my opinion, you're missing out on a lot. Join me in the Art Prof Discord. I will be hanging out in the Art Alongs channel. The invite link is in the video description below. And if you guys want to continue to learn and grow as an artist, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And I want to say thank you so much to our top Patreon supporters. You guys make it possible for us to keep it up and running. There's a lot of unglamorous things that take to run Art Prof. A lot of equipment, a lot of monthly fees, stuff we have to pay for. And you guys make it possible. Everybody, thank you so much for watching and drawing with me. I love the conversations that we have. So I'll see you guys next time.